Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next topic, which is combinatorics. Now, combinatorics is the mathematics of counting, and we've done some of this in the past, in particular with probability, because we said that if you can count, you can calculate probability, and also with the binomial theorem. Now, with the binomial theorem, it might not necessarily be as clear as to how combinatorics comes into play, but we'll take a look at that later, after we take a look at all the different types of combinatorics and those counting principles that we have. So let's take a look at the first one. It's called the product principle. Now the product principle states, if there are n different ways of performing an operation, and for each of these, there are n different ways of performing a second independent operation, then there are n times divided by m different ways of performing both in succession. Okay, so let's, let's kind of get a uh, handle on what exactly this is, this is referring to. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at this particular schematic here. And let's say, for example, these are different towns. So let's say that this is town A, town B, and town C. Now let's say that in order for us to get from town A to town B, there are three different paths that we can take. And then to go from B to C, there are two paths that we can take. Now, our objective at this particular point is let's assume that we're at A and we want to get to C. Now, notice there's no one way that we can get to C without going through B. So the thing that we're asking for then, using this product principle, is how many total ways can you actually go from A through B to end up at C, which is your final destination. So what this is saying then is that if there are n different, n different ways of performing an operation, okay, so basically what this operation is for us in this case is getting from A to B. So there are three different ways. We can either take this road, that road, or this road to get to B. Now it says, and for each of these, there are m different ways of performing a second independent operation. So the second independent operation, of course, is going from B to C. And notice that there are two different ways of going from B to C. Then there are n times by m different ways of performing both in succession. So that means that if I go from A to B and to C, of course that means that we cannot go back to A and then go back to B and then go to C. We're always moving in one direction. Then we know that we have three different possibilities here. We have two different possibilities here. n is going to be 3 m is going to be 2, so the total number of ways that we can get from A to C via B, and only moving in one direction from A, B to C, is 6. Now, another way that we are going to take a look at some of these uh, later uh, counting principles is using this technique here. It's just underlined, just to kind of keep track of what the operations are. So we can go ahead and say, well, this particular operation here is represented by three different possible ways of performing the operation, and in this particular case over here, there's two. Multiply those two together, again, we come up with six. Now, when it comes to the product principle, you can actually come up with a little bit more uh, varying degrees of difficulty, depending upon the different schematic that you have. So, well, one of the things that we're going to do then is just count paths. So, exactly how many paths do we actually have to actually get from one point to the other point. And we're going to, again, apply the counting the product principle to this particular schematic, but notice that there's going to be a little bit of a change with how we need to go ahead and total those possible paths. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening here. Again, the idea is that we want to go from A and we want to get to G. We can only move in one direction, and each path is just going to take us from one step to the next step to the next step. So notice that what we have here is a lot more complicated than this, but it's the same idea of using the product principle for each one of these here, here, and here, and then just adding them up because each one of them would describe how many total pathways we can get from one to here, from A to G through this, from A to G through this, and from A to G through these paths here. So, just to kind of break that down, if we went from A to B to E then to G, of course, 
in, which is going to be this first part here, there's only one way to get from A to B. And then to get from B to E, which I'm going to just designate as M, is going to be 2, because there's two different ways. And then from E to G, which I'm going to designate as P, is going to be equal to 1. And you would do the same likewise from A, C, D to G, and A, D, F to G, and you would come up with those values, and you would come up with a total of eight different paths. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking at first. Notice that it is quite straightforward at this point, but it is going to be something that we'll be applying all the way through this particular chapter regarding combinatorics or the, ma the mathematics of counting. So again, the product principle, okay, looking at how we can go ahead and count without having to actually go ahead and represent all of those things at one time, and breaking it down so that we can see the different pathways, and then also taking a look at a little bit more complicated schematics so that we can actually apply the, comp the product principle to more complicated uh, arrangements. Okay, so give it your best shot. We'll see how you do. See you next time. Bye.